Morning YouTube, GTC Shane here. How do you guys feel about buying a used performance car? That's A. And B, what would you consider high mileage in a used performance car? All right, let's talk about it. All right, welcome back to YouTube, guys. So I posted a short lately, well, recently, not lately, recently, on a, basically a 10-year-old M4 that had 60, like 60 plus thousand miles, like 68,000 miles. Pretty sweet little 2014 M4. Uh, unfortunately, it's got, I mean, it's clean. I don't think it's a competition package, but it's got a ton of miles, like 60-something thousand miles. And the dealership says, we don't have used car prices on anything on the used car because they change every day. So, okay, all right. And I said that it had a ton of miles and I got some pushback. I get it. I, I, I deserve some of that pushback. The pushback was that's not, in quotations, a ton of miles. And really a ton of miles is not a measurable term. It usually means there's, you know, like what, a couple hundred thousand miles on it. But it really brings up a point of, and and this is how my mind works, was well, what are, what's a high mileage car? I think there's two categories. One is, what kind of a car are we talking about? Are we talking about the most reliable cars on the road? Toyota, Honda, and Lexus? And are we talking about the Accords or a Civic or a Tacoma? You know, something, something every day that's not performance. Most articles would support high mileage being over a hundred thousand miles. I think that's pretty reasonable and I think most people would agree that a hundred thousand miles is high mileage. My point was this was not a Toyota, Lexus, or a Honda. It doesn't even make the top 10 list in terms of reliability according to like JD Power and Kelly Blue Book and some of these others that rate cars and consumer reports. It's a BMW. And not only it's a BMW, it's an M BMW. It's a performance car. So my threshold for high mileage <clears throat> in a, sorry about the sun guys. Let me see if I can change this a little bit. My, my point was high mileage in a performance car should have a different threshold, right? I'm not gonna buy a 100,000 mile used performance car. Probably not. I probably won't even buy one with 60,000 miles. Now, Hemi Muscle, if you guys watch his channel, such a great dude and such a great channel, just released a video, it was only like four or five minutes, and he kind of alluded, he was, his point of his video was talking about repos and, and that uh, the, the market is gonna be flooded for various reasons. But he brought up a good point about buying used Hellcats and Scat Packs. And he didn't say don't do it, but he was saying you might be able to find a deal where there's a used Scat Pack or Hellcat with under 10,000 miles. So I am just trying to defend my position a little bit because in general, most people that are driving performance cars are driving them how they should be driven in a spirited manner, right? And when you get up there to 30, 40, 50,000 miles of spirited driving, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful what you're getting because by nature of that being a performance car, it may have been tracked. It may have been driven hard. And there's a lot of variables that go into buying a used car. And this goes for both non-performance cars and performance cars. A, did people maintain according to the manufacturer uh, you know, maintenance schedule? Is that documented? Um, like Hemi Muscle said, Carfax doesn't tell you everything. Um, how many owners? Uh, did they change the water pump? Is it turbo? You know what is the? So I mean, there's all these, there's all these variables that you can't extract when you go walk a lot from some sales guy that's like. Oh yeah, this car's like new. You don't know anything about that car. Don't tell me it's like new. So 
I personally was not interested in a 10 year old BMW with 60,000 miles on it. No, thank you. I've had BMWs. That's why most people lease them. Because when their lease is up, they turn it in. Uh, nobody wants to own them. They're incredibly expensive to keep. Um, they can be incredibly unreliable too, but they're fantastic performance cars. So that's why people lease them. And then they get rid of them and they move on to something else. So if I'm in the market for a car, and especially, a, let's just say an American car, a Mustang, GT500, GT350, um, Dodge Scat Pack, an RT, a Hellcat, a Red Eye, and it's got 50,000 miles on it, I'm gonna be a little leery. I'm probably gonna pass on it. Unless it was my brother who was driving it, and I know exactly how he treated it. So that's it, and, and uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. Do you guys shy away from a used performance car? Would you buy a Corvette with 50,000 miles on it? Would you buy any performance car? And I'm not talking about high mileage Toyota Camry. It's a different story. Um, so anyways, it got me thinking about it. I did a little research on, on uh, performance cars and so forth, but I, I think most of you would agree you gotta stay away from higher mileage performance. And the whole point of my video is the threshold for high mileage in performance cars, in my opinion, would be half. So if you've got a 50,000 mile, to me that's a high mileage in a performance car versus a 100,000 in a non-performance car. I'm just kind of making stuff up, flying flying from the seat of my pants. All right, guys, till next uh, GTC video, this is Shane. You guys take care, have a great week, and uh, we'll see you soon.